Okay, so for difference quotient, you need to know what the difference quotient is. This ends up um, being the biggest portion bless you, of what's called uh, the definition of a derivative in calculus. So, wow, a ton of calculus, like 60% of Cal 1 is all about derivatives. And this is almost the definition of a derivative. And really, it just comes down to a bunch of fancy algebra work. But the difference quotient doesn't change. So you have to know this formula. So if you don't want to memorize that for this course, that's fine. You'll have to memorize it for calculus, but you could throw that on your note card. And it tells you how to start off all of these. So how we simplify a radical, a rational, and a polynomial will be different, but how you start it off should be the same. So this is saying, f of x plus h means you go to the function and everywhere there is an x you put an x plus h this is saying subtract the function and it's always over h So you shouldn't have any issues memorizing the difference quotient because you could put it on a note card if you wanted to. Applying it is just really understanding this notation. Now the simplifying, again, it just depends. Like if you did the difference quotient here or here, you're going to have different algebra to simplify. But for A, the only thing we can do to make this uh, get closer to what we want it to be is to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the numerator. I have to multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing so that I'm essentially multiplying by 1 and it's conjugate because the middle sign is switched from a minus to a plus. And now we need to multiply these fractions together. And as terrible as it looks, it actually comes together pretty quickly because the denominators you can't do much. You've got h times this stuff That's pretty much the only thing we can do with the denominators to say that they're being multiplied. And then the numerators, we got two terms times two terms, which is going to be FOIL. But most of this is going to either cancel out or simplify nicely. Because the square root of something times the square root of itself is just going to give you that something. The outer part of FOIL would be this big mess, but then the inner part of FOIL is the equal but opposite, so those will always combine and make zero. That's why we pick the conjugate over something else. And then the last part of FOIL, positive times a negative is negative. The square root of 4 minus x times the square root of 4 minus x would be just <coughs> 4 minus x, but it's minus all of it. And then the last thing that we can do is combine some like terms in the numerator and then we will be finished. So I've got a 4 and then when I distribute this minus 4 so those go to 0. I've got a negative x and if I distribute this I've got a plus x so those are going to cancel and I'm left with an h and your last step in all of these question types is there should be a factor of h in the numerator, factor of h in the denominator, so those cancel, and you are left with. Is that a negative one? That it is not. A negative h. It's a. Oh yes, because it should distribute. Yes, thank you. So for even parts b and c, difference quotient still the same. Applying the difference quotient still the same. It's just that you're not going to multiply by conjugate to simplify those. They simplify differently, but for this type, this is what you do. Now in calculus, we would then take the limit as h approaches 0, which basically just means you plug in 0 for h and simplify it, and then you've got something called the derivative, and then in calculus we spend two, three months talking about different applications that derivatives measure in the real world. Not too bad if you can handle the algebra.